Memory, How to Develop, Train, and Use It Book by William Walker Atkinson Narrated by Andrew Originally published in 1909 This is a great audiobook production created for research, study, and discussion purposes. Chapter 9 Training the Eye Before the memory can be stored with sight impressions, before the mind can recollect or remember such impressions, the eye must be used under the direction of the attention. We think that we see things when we look at them, but in reality we see but few things, in the sense of registering clear and distinct impressions of them upon the tablets of the subconscious mind. We look at them rather than see them. Halleck says regarding this sight without seeing idea, a body may be imaged on the retina without ensuring perception. There must be an effort to concentrate the attention upon the many things which the world presents to our senses. A man once said to the pupils of a large school, all of whom had seen cows, I should like to find out how many of you know whether a cow's ears are above, below, behind, or in front of her horns. I want only those pupils to raise their hands who are sure about the position and who will promise to give a dollar to charity if they answer wrong. Only two hands were raised. Their owners had drawn cows and in order to do that had been forced to concentrate their attention upon the animals. Fifteen pupils were sure that they had seen cats climb trees and descend them. There was unanimity of opinion that the cats went up heads first. When asked whether the cats came down head or tail first, the majority were sure that the cats descended as they were never known to do. Anyone who had ever noticed the shape of the claws of any beast of prey could have answered the question without seeing an actual descent. Farmers boys who have often seen cows and horses lie down and rise are seldom sure whether the animals rise with their fore or hind feet first or whether the habit of the horse agrees with that of the cow in this respect. The elm tree has about its leaf a peculiarity which all ought to notice the first time they see it. And yet only about 5% of a certain school could incorporate in a drawing this peculiarity, although it is so easily outlined on paper. Perception, to achieve satisfactory results, must summon the will to its aid to concentrate the attention. Only the smallest part of what falls upon our senses at any time is actually perceived. The way to train the mind to receive clear sight impressions, and therefore to retain them in the memory, is simply to concentrate the will and attention upon objects of sight. Endeavoring to see them plainly and distinctly, and then to practice recalling the details of the object some time afterward. It is astonishing how rapidly one may improve in this respect by a little practice. And it is amazing how great a degree of proficiency in this practice one may attain in a short time. You have doubtless heard the old story of Hodin, the French conjurer, who cultivated his memory of sight impressions by following a simple plan. He started into practice by observing the number of small objects in the Paris shop windows he could see and remember in one quick glance as he rapidly walked past the window. He followed the plan of noting down on paper the things that he saw and remembered. At first, he could remember but two or three articles in the window. Then he began to see and remember more and so on, each day adding to his power of perception and memory. Until finally he was able to see and remember nearly every small article in a large shop window, after bestowing but one glance upon it. Others have found this plan an excellent one, and have developed their power of perception greatly, and at the same time cultivated an amazingly retentive memory of objects thus seen. It is all a matter of use and practice. The experiment of Hodin may be varied infinitely, with excellent results. The Hindus train their children along these lines, by playing the sight game with them. This game is played by exposing to the sight of the children a number of small objects, at which they gaze intently, and which are then withdrawn from their sight. The children then endeavor to excel each other in writing down the names of the objects which they have seen. The number of objects is small to begin with, but is increased each day until an astonishing number are perceived and remembered. Rudyard Kipling in his great book, Kim, gives an instance of this game, played by Kim in a trained native youth. Legan Sahib exposes to the side of the two boys a tray filled with jewels and gems, allowing them to gaze upon it a few moments before it is withdrawn from sight. Then the competition begins as follows. There are under that paper five blue stones, one big, one smaller, and three small, said Kim in all haste. There are four green stones, and one with a hole in it. There is one yellow stone that I can see through, and one like a pipe stem. There are two red stones, and, and, give me time. But Kim had reached the limit of his powers. 
Then came the turn of the native boy. Hear my count, cried the native child. First are two flawed sapphires, one of two rudas and one of four, as I should judge. The four ruta sapphire is chipped at the edge. There is one Turkestan turquoise, plain with green veins, and there are two inscribed, one with the name of God in gilt, and the other being cracked across, for it came out of an old ring. I cannot read. We have now the five blue stones, for flamed emeralds there are, but one is drilled in two places, and one is a little carven. Their weight, said Ligan Sahib, impassively. Three, five, five, and four rutas, as I judge it. There is one piece of old greenish amber, and a cheap cut topaz from Europe. There is one ruby of Burma, one of two rutas, without a flaw. And there is a ballast ruby, flawed, of two rutas. There is a carved ivory from China, representing a rat sucking an egg. And there is last, ah, uh, ha, huh, a ball of crystal as big as a bean set in gold leaf. Kim is mortified at his bad beating, and asks the secret. The answer is, by doing it many times over, till it is done perfectly, for it is worth doing. Many teachers have followed plans similar to that just related. A number of small articles are exposed, and the pupils are trained to see and remember them, the process being gradually made more and more difficult. A well-known American teacher was in the habit of rapidly making a number of dots on the blackboard, and then erasing them before the pupils could count them in the ordinary way. The children then endeavored to count their mental impressions, and before long they could correctly name the number up to ten or more, with ease. They said they could see six or see ten, as the case may be, automatically and apparently without the labor of consciously counting them. It is related in works dealing with the detection of crime, that in the celebrated thieves schools in Europe, the young thieves are trained in a similar way. The old scoundrels acting as teachers exposing a number of small articles to the young ones, and requiring them to repeat exactly what they had seen. Then follows a higher course in which the young thieves are required to memorize the objects in a room. The plan of houses, etc. They are sent forth to spy out the land for future robberies, in the guise of beggars soliciting alms, and thus getting a rapid peep into houses, offices, and stores. It is said that in a single glance they will perceive the location of all of the doors, windows, locks, bolts, etc. Many nations have boys' games in which the youngsters are required to see and remember after taking a peep. The Italians have a game called Moro in which one boy throws out a number of fingers, which must be instantly named by the other boy, a failure resulting in a forfeit. The Chinese youths have a similar game, while the Japanese boys reduce this to a science. A well-trained Japanese youth will be able to remember the entire contents of a room after one keen glance around it. Many of the Orientals have developed this faculty to a degree almost beyond belief. But the principle is the same in all cases, the gradual practice and exercise, beginning with a small number of simple things, and then increasing the number and complexity of the objects. The faculty is not so rare as one might imagine at first thought. Take a man in a small business and let him enter the store of a competitor, and see how many things he will observe and remember after a few minutes in the place. Let an actor visit a play in another theater, and see how many details of the performance he will notice and remember. Let some women pay a visit to a new neighbor, and then see how many things about that house they will have seen and remembered to be retailed to their confidential friends afterward. It is the old story of attention following the interest, and memory following the attention. An expert whist player will see and remember every card played in the game, and just who played it. A chess or checker player will see and remember the previous moves in the game, if he be expert, and can relate them afterward. A woman will go shopping and will see and remember thousands of things that a man would never have seen, much less remembered. As Hoden said, thus, for instance, I can safely assert that a lady seeing another pass at full speed in a carriage will have had time to analyze her toilette from her bonnet to her shoes, and be able to describe not only the fashion and quality of the stuffs, but also say if the lace be real or only machine-made. I have known ladies to do this. But, remember this, for it is important, whatever can be done in this direction by means of attention, inspired by interest, may be duplicated by attention directed by will. In other words, the desire to accomplish the task adds and creates an artificial interest just as effective as the natural feeling. And, as you progress, the interest in the game task will add new interest, 
and you will be able to duplicate any of the feats mentioned above. It is all a matter of attention, interest, and practice. Begin with a set of dominoes, if you like, and try to remember the spots on one of them rapidly glanced at, then two, then three. By increasing the number gradually, you will attain a power of perception and a memory of sight impressions that will appear almost marvelous. And not only will you begin to remember dominoes, but you will also be able to perceive and remember thousands of little details of interest and in everything that have heretofore escaped your notice. The principle is very simple, but the results that may be obtained by practice are wonderful. The trouble with most of you is that you have been looking without seeing, gazing, but not observing. The objects around you have been out of your mental focus. If you will but change your mental focus, by means of will and attention, you will be able to cure yourself of the careless methods of seeing and observing that have been hindrances to your success. You have been blaming it on your memory, but the fault is with your perception. How can the memory remember, when it is not given anything in the way of clear impressions? You have been like young infants in this matter. Now it is time for you to begin to sit up and take notice, no matter how old you may be. The whole thing in a nutshell is this. In order to remember the things that pass before your sight, you must begin to see with your mind, instead of with your retina. Let the impression get beyond your retina and into your mind. If you will do this, you will find that memory will do the rest. For more audiobook like this, hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get notified when we post a new audiobook. Thanks for listening.